the Atlanta History Center, and the purpose of this uh, interview is for you to describe to us your uh, thoughts and works and actions in World War II. Uh, we'll start off, if you will, give us your full name, please. Uh, Joseph Wiley Reed, R-E-I-D. All right, sir. Where were you born? I was born five miles northeast of Plains, Georgia, in Sumter County on Muckalee Creek. What date? Uh, November the 18th, 1925. How long did you live in Sumter County? I lived there until uh, I was 18 years old and I joined the, uh, I joined the Army. Uh, when I was 17 and I had to have my mother uh, sign the uh, application for me. So you were enlisted? I, we, we had to get my mother's permission for me to go and uh, I really didn't have to go because I had a brother in the army at the present time overseas and and my mother had three son-in-laws in the army so it, it, I would have made the fifth one that my mother had in the army. And what date did you go into the army? Uh, I listed in, in when I was 17 in September of 1943 but I didn't become 18 until November the 18th of 43. And, that was when and I went in. They caught uh, in January the fifteenth, nineteen forty-four. At that time, where were you living? I was living. I was living in in Leslie, Georgia, uh, in the country. My father ran a small grocery store there and and uh, did farming on the side. Where'd you get your basic training? Uh, the first basic training was in Camp Lee, Virginia. It was, it was the big quartermaster uh, training center. And uh, I went there, I, I came to Atlanta to McPherson around January the 15th. And we stayed there about, about 10 days and they shipped us out to Camp Lee, Virginia. Why did you happen to pick the Army? Well, uh, my brother was in the Army and uh, so I, um, I have a brother, Emmett K. Wood Reed Jr., that's, that was two years older than me, so, uh, so the Army. And the reason I was put in the quartermaster, I wanted to get in the infantry like him, but, uh, but I have a bad right eye, what we call a, what we call a, 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 a slow eye. Uh, and uh, so I couldn't get into the infantry, so I, they put me in the quartermaster corps. And uh, where did you go after Virginia? I, I took basic training about four times in, in Camp Lee, Virginia, because they didn't need us at that time. Uh, but I did, I did go to uh, Fort Benning for, in 1940, uh, 1944 for about uh, three months. And th but then we went back to Camp Lee, Virginia. And, and then we left uh, uh, in... Uh, in, in October of 1944, we got on a troop train and we went to Columbus, Ohio, and then we came down to Texarkana, Arkansas, or Texarkana, Texas, and I I went to uh, Camp Polk, Louisiana, and we had more training at Camp Polk, Louisiana, and then we got on a, a train. Uh, about uh, December the 15th and we took the southern route to to California going through Texas, uh, New Mexico, Arizona, uh, southern southern California and we went to Camp Stoneman at San Francisco, California. Do you remember any of the instructors you had in all this various training? Did any of them stand out in your mind? Uh, n no, it, it was uh, only, only one, one person. Uh, it was, a, it was a sergeant, uh, because in, in basic training there they change your cadre so much and everything. There's one sergeant, but I forgot, I've forgotten his name. Um, did you learn anything in all this? Uh, 
Well, <laughs> uh, most of the, <laughs> they got me in good shape, you know, and uh, we had we had we had all the uh, basic training that an instrument would would have. Uh, with a, but we had uh, mostly uh, we had the old uh, World War One O uh, three, what we call 1903 uh, rifle that we trained with. But uh, but they wasn't used. We when we went to South Pacific, we had a we had a carbine, what we call a carbine. Where did you leave the states from? Camp Stoneman, California, on January on January the first, nineteen forty five. But Camp Stoneman is not a pier, it's a seaport, is it? Uh, no, uh, it's it's up the it's up the river there. Uh, Camp Stoneman is uh, up the river and is about ten miles, I think, down to the. Uh, to the to the San Francisco Bridge. So where, uh, what I'm getting at, where did you actually get on board the ship? Uh, at at uh, at Camp Stoneman, uh, uh, where the piers were, where the where the river uh, went up. Uh, so it was, I think, it was about ten miles up there. So and it, this was a troop ship. Yes, I, I believe it was a Liberty ship. Who was it operated by? Uh, uh, I'd say the Navy uh, uh, personnel on the on the ship. Was it set up as a troop ship? Yes. How long were you on that ship? We were, we were on that ship uh, about um, over a month because we had to zigzag uh, to the to the uh, uh, to New Guinea. We didn't go straight. We we'd go north and then down and everything. They were scared, scared of submarines and everything, so we had to uh, uh, zigzag. Was well, New Guinea where you were headed? Yes. What part? Hollandia. Uh, Hollandia is on the, I believe it's on the east coast. And what yeah. did you do in New Guinea? There, there we had a, we had a base, uh, uh, depot supply company there at New Guinea. We had everything. We, we had, uh, uh, khakis, uh, 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 we didn't, we didn't have that. We had some ammunition, but no rifles, anything like that. Mostly it was, it was, uh, khaki, uh, pants, shirts, and underwear, and, and, and things like that, and, uh, and the, not even the food, but we, we had big, uh, big uh, uh, warehouses uh, out in the open that was covered up with canvas in the in South Pacific, and we stayed there about, uh, about four months. Where did your food come from? Uh, it was uh, it was there. Uh, we had refrigeration, and uh, and uh, uh, at first we we just used the uh, the old uh, you know canned goods of the uh, of the army, you know. But but later we we had we had uh, we had uh, cooked meals, and uh, so the like, meals were pretty good there. Yeah. Now during this four months, what were you doing? Issuing equipment? Um, mostly, mostly issuing equipment on the trucks, and they were they were taking it and uh, and uh, and putting it on ships to to go maybe to the Philippines or places like that. And where did you go from New Guinea? Uh, I, we went to uh, Manila, and and we uh, we uh, put our 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 company was on at the end of Dewey Boulevard at Manila and MacArthur had his headquarters there in the in the uh in the uh presidential suite of the of the main hotel there in, in Manila. So uh so MacArthur was there when uh, when we got there. But the geographically challenged where is Manila? I, I believe it's on uh I believe it's on the uh, I, I, that's I, uh it, it was, it's sort of in the middle it's on it's on Luzon, in the, in the middle of the uh, of What's Luzon. What's the overall country? The uh, the with well, the the Philippines and the island the islands. Uh, I mean, they were, which which is a uh, uh, I guess they got a thousand islands yeah. there. All right. So you went and stayed there how long? About uh, we stayed there until uh, until July. Uh, around the 15th of July. Were you there when it fell? Philippines? Yes, sir. No, we, we came in there later. I, 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 think, I think the Philippines, uh, uh, MacArthur came back uh, maybe, uh, maybe the f uh, 1st of uh, uh, 45, and this was July of 45.
So he was back there by then. Yes, yes, he was there. He he was there in the in the hotel and everything. During the time that you were there, what were you doing? Uh, we we had a supply there, mostly. Uh, 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 we had a big stack of Coca Colas, and we and we also had our regular regular uh, 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 khakis and uh, and things like that. During that time, did you have any interaction with the civilians on their own? Yes, yes. Did you uh, pull? Uh, I don't know. We call it liberty in the navy. What did you call uh, yeah, it? Yeah, we we were uh, the after we left uh, the end of uh, our camp. At the end of uh, Deer Boulevard, we went almost to the uh, the between the center of uh, Manila and the uh, and the uh, and the port where the ships came in and everything, which which was just down down where we uh, we uh, had uh, we had mostly seven men tents that uh, uh, seven men soldiers stay in each tent, and we we had them there. And we would go into almost. We'd go into Manila every night, almost. I mean, it was mostly uh, filled up with bars and everything. And uh, so we we would go in there. Did you ever have any USO shows come to the Philippines? USO. Yes. Uh, yes, we had. Uh, we had uh, uh, Oklahoma. Came, but I, I think it was in the Phil in the in the New Guinea we had Oklahoma. It was a it was a, a squad of the uh, of the uh, actors and actresses that came and put on uh, uh, in New Guinea, Oklahoma. That was in New Guinea. That, I believe that was in New Guinea. The, they are in Manila. I, I don't remember anything, but we might have been so busy downtown that we didn't have time to see it anyway. And where did you go from Manila? Uh, it's one thing about Manila. They kept the prisoners at the, at the University of Manila, and it, it was uh, it was a brick uh, wall all the way around and everything, and uh, and that was the uh, that was the place that a lot of the prisoners, that the Japanese kept the American prisoners and the other prisoners there was was on the U University of Manila grounds. And uh, the, uh, so when I got there and everything, we used to, I mean, we went there to, to show, you know, to see where the prisoners had stayed and everything. So we, we saw the, the uh, it was all shot up and everything, but we saw the University of Manila there, which is on the uh, outskirts of Manila there. And whenever you got through whatever you were doing in the Philippines, where did you go? Well, around... Uh, July the 15th, 1945, we, we got on another Liberty ship, and we were going to invade Japan. But what they did, I, I was in the 4168 Quartermaster, Quartermaster Depot Company, and they took the 362nd uh, uh, Quartermaster Service Company, and they took all the, uh, all the uh, old Ola, I'd say above uh, 25 to 28, they kept those in the 362nd quartermaster, I mean the service com quartermaster service company, but what they took part of the 4168, and I was one of those out of the 4168, and put us in the 362nd quartermaster service company, and they attached us to the marine division. So we were going to invade Japan uh, so we were already on the way, and the uh, and the uh, when we uh, got on the ship there, I remember seeing uh, uh, we could see the lights on uh, Okinawa, and uh, so we stayed there uh, uh, about about three weeks, and then the uh, the first bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. On, I believe it was uh, 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 the uh, August the uh, the 3rd, and then no, August the 6th, and three days later, uh, uh, on August the 9th, uh, Nagasaki, they dropped the bomb on Nagasaki. I want to back up just a second. You were in the South Pacific, I guess. Where were you when the war in Europe ended? Uh, that, I, I, that was in uh, June. 
uh, uh, so I, I must have been in Manila. That was in June, I believe, of 1945. So you all did hear about it? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we had. And where were you when President Roosevelt died? Uh, that that was in 45? What, in 45? <laughs> yeah. Now, what month are we talking about? April of 45? I sure didn't. I don't remember. I, 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 was, in, I was still in New Guinea. Okay. I was in New Guinea. When he died. When he died, sure. right. Okay, so you're on the ship. This uh, troop ship, was it operated by the Army or Navy? Uh, Navy. Navy. Yeah. Uh, was the food pretty good? Uh, yes, it, it was good. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't bad, but most all of us stayed, uh, as many as we could, uh, we didn't stay down, down uh, in the ship. We'd stay on top side as much as we could. Uh, and some of us slept up there on the top side if we could find and they had a regular chow hall and all set up. Oh, yeah. Them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you stayed there about three weeks. Well, we, we stayed there until, until set, we stayed on that ship a couple of months almost. Uh, September, let's say that we landed at, at Sasebo uh, on September the 10th. That, that's what the uh, war records say, but but I remember being there September the first, so we 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 got about ten days in there, but the uh, but the uh, Marines landed two days two days before before the uh, uh, we the three sixty second before we landed, and uh, what we did when we landed the Marines were already there in the, in some uh, they they had a ship building. Uh, place there where the Marines stayed and we stayed in another one and the uh, and the Marines had been there two days but what they wanted to do after two days they marched us down down the middle of Sasebo and uh, and we we had the rifles on our the, the carbine on our shoulder and we walked down the middle of uh, Sasebo at that time we didn't know what was going to happen we didn't know whether whether they were going to attack us or nothing, but uh, no Japanese that that I heard of ever attacked an American soldier. And the, and the reason was that because when the emperor said that the war was over, the war was over, and and we we had no trouble. At all with any Japanese uh, person like 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 they have it in Iraq today, there's not a single person that I can remember. We had a few accidents that, that soldiers got killed, but I can't remember uh, the uh, four or five months that I was there. I, I don't I don't remember anything that where American and Japanese got in any kind of fight or nothing else. During the time that you were on the ship, you were preparing to invade. Japan. Yes. Had you ever fired that carbine rifle before? No. Uh, except except in practice. Never, you did have never. Practice. But so uh, they did give you some instructions on how Well, to the only thing, uh, as I said, we, we took basic training almost a year back in Camp Lee, Virginia. So so we, we would go through everything, you know, uh, hand hand to hand combat and everything else. I mean so so we were well versed with the uh, with the but they, they didn't give us the carbine until we got uh, to New Guinea. Did you get some training in it there? Yes, we, we, got, we got some uh, training on, on the carbine. Okay, when you, uh, in Sasebo, how long did you stay there? We stayed there about, uh, if we got there on September the 1st, we stayed at Sasebo about uh, two weeks. What were you doing during that time? Uh, just, just, uh, around in this, in this, uh, where the shipbuilding plant was, and, uh, just there. I mean, we we didn't we didn't we didn't go out anymore except that one time we 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 did march down the center. It, it was about uh, 400 of us, I guess, that marched down the center of the. Uh, you just sat around. Yeah, there? yeah. We we wasn't doing anything. You mentioned uh, a quartermaster company and then a quartermaster service company. What's the difference? Well, the very well the. the uh, the 4168th is what we call a quartermaster depot that, that actually, uh, that actually uh, uh, ran, ran the operations and everything. 
because uh, we'd have trucks coming in, you know, picking for other companies, you know, picking up everything. But then after, after uh, about two weeks at Sasebo, we moved to Fukuoka, which is about, uh, I guess, 50 miles from Sasebo. And we, and we had there, we had a big warehouse uh, of, uh, of uh, everything that we, we always had was the khakis and, the, and uh, everything else, except we didn't have any uh, ammunition or guns and everything else, but we had everything else that the soldier needed. The, uh, the, now we didn't we didn't have we didn't have the refrigeration that was that was with another company, but everything else that wasn't refrigerated we we had. During the time you were in Sasebo, did you have any uh, contact with any of the civilians? Uh, well, they were, there was houses there close close to us, and and we would go uh, visit the, some of the Japanese and everything. So they that, treated you well. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, just 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 like just like home people. We didn't have a. We couldn't understand what they said, but uh, but we got along with them, you know. But uh, and we we visited. And we we we'd go and eat with them, you know. And it, now, when you got up to uh, the next place, you were actually engaged then in, in distributing supplies. Or yes, what? yes. And they and they uh, the trucks would come in there, and we load the uh, load the trucks and everything. What was your rate by rank by then? Uh, I, I was uh, what we call a buck sergeant. Buck sergeant is three stripes. Yeah. And uh, at that time, I was uh, I wasn't twenty. I was almost I was almost twenty. Did you have to take any examination for a rank change? No, no. It was it was all done. You know, with uh, with the captain and the uh, and the first sergeant and the you know. How long did you stay? In this uh, the uh, when I first got to Fukuoka, that must have been around uh, September the uh, September the twelfth, the fifteenth, something like that. We got it. We got in in the uh, in a in what we call a personnel carrier. It carries about uh, six men. And we had blankets there in, uh, in the warehouse, and we, we loaded the um, personnel carry down. And there was about four of us in there, and we, carried, they were, we were going to carry the blankets over there to the hospital at, uh, at Nagasaki. So I, I went with them. They, they were going. They said, Toby, you want to go with us? I said, yeah. So I jumped in the back, and, and I rode over there. And uh, when I got there, I, I didn't see very few people, but I, we went in the uh, middle of the uh, of uh, here of uh, Nagasaki there, and, and uh, all I saw was that dust and uh, a few well, bricks. The bomb had already been dropped in when you got there. Yeah, see, the, the, this this was around September the fifteenth, and uh, and the bomb was uh, dropped on August the ninth. Uh, so uh, so, but it wasn't anything there except uh, a few uh, few bricks. And uh, you'd have a clump of bricks there, and and so I said, I told him I said, well, just let me out here in the middle of this thing, and y'all pick me up on the way back. And uh, so I, I stayed there about uh, about 45 minutes by myself. It wasn't anybody else around there. Uh, a couple of Japanese walked down, and uh, all it was, and I had on combat boots, and I started kicking the dust, you know, and the, and the, and the only only building I saw was up up against the uh, the mountain on the left side there uh, was about a half a half a building left, a brick building left, and everything else was uh, was flat. How long did you stay in Japan after that? Uh, that was uh, that was around September the fifteenth. I, I left there in uh, in April. The following April. That's right, in nineteen forty six. And where did you go from there? Well, they they wanted me to. Uh, uh, all, a lot of us coming home then, and I was only uh, 19, almost 20, and they wanted me to stay there. And they said, "Well, we'll we'll make a master sergeant. You can have master sergeant. We'll make him master sergeant, which is three stripes down and three up, which is the highest rank, except sergeant major that you can you can be in the army." With, uh, and I said, "No, I'm I'm going." I'm going home. So you came, uh, where'd you come into the States? 
they shipped us up to uh, uh, up to uh, uh, Tokyo, and we got on the ship there, a, a small ship, and we and we uh, started home, and uh, and we wound up in the uh, Panama Canal. We, we came through the Panama Canal, and then we came up the East Coast. That that was around April, April fifteenth, and we came into New York Harbor. And, uh, was this a Navy or an Army ship? Uh, it was Navy. It was all all Navy personnel, you know. They. Uh, but it was some kind of a troop carrier. Yeah, well, it was it was a uh, troop uh, 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 Liberty ship, uh, which was a, which is a small, you know, uh, ship that uh, I believe Kaiser built most of them out there in California, you know. So you came into New York, and where did you go for discharge? Well, we went to. Uh, to a camp in New Jersey, and we we stayed there about about uh, about five days, and uh, and then we got on a sh on a train and came to Fort Mac first. So you were discharged at Fort Mac. Uh, I was I went in the army at Fort Mac and I was discharged at Fort Mac. And when was that? Uh, th that was. Uh, about May the 15th, uh, 1946. Uh, did you go back to Leslie then? Yes, I went back home. But, uh, and you said you went to school under the GI Bill? Well, when I got back, I didn't know, I, I, when I was 14 years old, I started working at a grocery store in America. And uh, I decided I didn't want to go back there, which I could go on. It was Colonial Stores, what it was. It was well, at first it was Old Rogers Stores, and then Colonial Stores, and then it came Big Star and Little Star. So I, I decided uh, that I didn't know what I wanted to do. So we, I, we had the GI Bill, so I, I started going to Georgia Southwestern there at home, and going and just living at home and going back and forth, which wasn't, it was about 12 miles to uh, Georgia Southwestern. So I went there for a couple of quarters, and then fall quarter I went to uh, I went to the university, and I stayed up at one quarter, and then I went back to uh, back home and uh, went to Georgia Southwest. Did you graduate from Georgia Southwest? I graduated in, yes in nineteen in nineteen forty in forty seven I graduated from Georgia Southwest. Did you ever go back to, to the University of Georgia? Yes, I, I went there and I majored in uh, accounting. And you graduated from the University of Georgia. Graduated from the University of Georgia. And where did you go from there? Well, I went back home. <laughs> and I got married. Uh, July the 9th, 1949. How many children did you have? Well, we, uh, we stayed at home with uh, Mom and Daddy for 18 months. Me and my wife. And then I got a job with... Uh, you know Royal, U.S. Rubber Company, in Hogansfield, Georgia. We they have a big in uh, in 1951. They had a big textile division. It had a, had about 15, 20 mills all over the South. So uh, so I worked there at uh, Hogansfield for about three years in the cost department because I had a degree in accounting. And uh, this gets you. <laughs> This gets you right here. Have you ever talked about this at this length before? No, 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 no. I've, I've talked about it, you know, plenty of times. Uh, but you never did tell me how many children you had. Well, the reason I didn't say because it took us eight years huh, <laughs> to have our first child. <laughs> uh, we had you two. We, we had two children. We had two children. We. Uh, I have a son that lives with me in Dalton. He's 45, and I have a daughter, Marianne, and she lives in uh, Carver County. Were you married more than once? No. No, I started going with uh, Alice Bagley when uh, This really gets rough. <laughs> this really gets rough. Ooh. When uh, 
when she was 15. And we went together for seven years before we got married. Where was she from? She was from Leslie, DeSoto. Her, her, her great grandfather was one of the first doctors in below Macon. They moved there in 18. He came there in 1843 from uh, from New Hampshire. We really think that the Methodist Church sent him down there as a missionary in 1843. So the uh, so she had been there. Her family had been there. Uh, since 1843, and, uh, and most of the first ones in there in, in South Georgia, around Sly County, Sumter County, and everything was in uh, 1836 at, at Ellaville up there. But uh, her family, her, her, her great grandfather was a doctor. Her father was a doctor. Her brother was a dentist. They were educated family. They're English. Did you, did you retire from Uniroyal? No, no. I, I, I stayed with Uniroyal for 11 years. And uh, I wound up at Rockefeller Center in New York. I, I stayed up there for 18 months. With Yes, uh, at uh, Rockefeller Center. But uh, before then, I, I went to Redding, Pennsylvania, and uh, I sold yarn to the knitters up there and the carpet people uh, from our textile division. And I stayed uh, six years in Redding, Pennsylvania. And then from Redding, Pennsylvania, I moved to Scotch Plains, New Jersey, and, uh, and worked and took a bus every morning to Rockefeller Center for 18 months then. But I came to Dalton, Georgia, in, uh, in 1960, so I've been in Dalton 43 years. Did you come to Dalton with Uniroyal? Yes, 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 yes. That, that was our biggest uh, biggest uh, sales office was in Dalton. We, we were uh, selling to the uh, bedspread people and the carpet people. Well, at that time, it, it was very little. And when I got there in 1960, it was very, very little carpet. But we started the carpet in 1960. Uh, well, the, before that, it was a bed, bedspread. Uh, uh, we we sold cotton to them. So, wh who did you retire from? Well, after that, I went to um, I went to work with Bill Manufacturing Company out of Macon. They, they had a big. They were all textiles, hundred percent textiles. So I stayed with them three years, and then. Then I got I went in, into uh, selling uh, yarn and jute and everything for for other people. Uh, we, we had a broker's company, so I did that for about five years. And after I did that, I started uh, in the carpet business myself. I, I started three carpet mills up there in Dalton, but I found out that I liked to start them, but I didn't like to run them. So I, every time I'd buy one. I'd, I'd keep it two or three years and sell it, so I kept doing that. So that's that's what I retired from uh, from uh, selling the carpet mills in Dalton. So uh, that's the reason you still live in Dalton. Then. That's right. Yes. And you have one son living with you now. Yes. Right? You never said where your other daughter where your daughter. My my daughter is at uh, in Cobb County in East Cobb County. She uh, teaches second grade at Rocky Mount Elementary. And she's been there for 20 years. How did you get along with your officers and fellow soldiers? Have any problems? No, never, except one time. Uh, I went to, uh, I got up one morning and I, was, and I thought I was sick, you know, but I come to find out I wasn't. Uh, so I, I went to the, uh, to the doctor went on sick call, and he gave me a couple of aspirin or something, and I came back. I had a headache real bad, you know. And, it, and, it, and at night, uh, that afternoon, I started feeling better. So every, every, about every third, second night, we'd have a movie. And uh, so I thought I was well, you know, that I could go to the movie. And the, uh, the first sergeant saw me at the movie, and he said, Toby, what are you doing here? He said, you're sick. 
And when you get sick in the army, you stay sick for 24 hours, you know. <laughs> so, so after that, he, he put me on com company punishment for a week. <laughs> what did they call you in the army? Uh, Toby. Where did that come from? Well, I'm, I'm named for my, my two grandfathers, Joseph Reed and uh, Wiley Carter. And my, my grandfather, Joseph Reed, he, he had a nickname, Joby. So, um, so they, my mother and father and sisters and brothers, they, they called me Joby, after my grandfather. So when I went to the first grade, the, the teacher asked me um, what was my name was. I said, my name's Joby. And she thought I said Toby. So it's, it's, been, uh, it's been Toby. It's been Toby ever since. Uh, so the nickname uh, was Toby. Um, did you have any um, occasion or reason to uh, pull any kind of practical jokes on your fellow troops? Or did you all do that? Very, 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 very little uh, that, that I know of. Uh, I don't remember, you know, it just, uh, I'm sure we did, but nothing, nothing that uh, stands out, you know. And you were pretty serious about the whole thing. Well, sometimes, sometimes you can be serious, but you can't be too serious for that long a time. You have to <laughs> What do you think of your experience in the Army? Did it change you? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. In what way? Well, it uh, it gives you uh, uh, confidence that you can do anything. That's that's the reason I, I think I think every eighteen year old son or daughter, if they wanted to, you should go in the army for for one, two years. It, it it matures you. So you feel better for the experience. Oh yeah, oh no doubt about it. I think everybody should go. Would you have gotten a college education maybe if you had not gotten the GI Bill? No, no, no there's no way. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even thought about it. I didn't think about it until until I got home. Did you take advantage of the VA loan assistance in buying a home? No, no, I, I never, I never did because uh, once I started working with U.S. Rubber Company, I had enough, you know, uh, credit uh, uh, where I didn't have to, you know. Used, I never did use the gun. And then we, uh, in the carpet business, I, uh, I thought about using, you know, the small business loans and things like that. But the, but the banks in Dalton, they would loan me any any amount of money I wanted on, on my signature. So it didn't, uh, it really didn't. Uh, but it's it's a good thing because a lot of people didn't have that. Uh, that back in one of the reasons I could borrow a lot of money up at the at the at, in Dalton was the uh, president of the First National Bank up there was Gib Watts. Uh, it's when I got there in 1960, and uh, and I lived with Gib Watts on on Prince Avenue in Athens, Georgia, for about three years over there. Uh, he, he and his wife was, he was in in uh, school, but he'd finished. He was a CPA. And uh, and he lived upstairs with us and his wife, uh, Valerie. Uh, she was in law school there, so she finished law th that university. And when I got got it Dalton, there was Gib Watts as president of the First National Bank. So I thought I didn't have much trouble. Uh, have you got anything else you'd like to add about your uh, visit to Microsoft? No, that, that's that's the only thing. Uh, uh, Looking back and everything, the, at the time we were glad that uh, we didn't have to go into Japan, no doubt about it. But uh, but looking back on it, we we should have never dropped that mom on Hiroshima, because we we had them beat, and all all that uh, Mike Arthur had to do was uh, get in touch with the emperor, and he and the emperor could have stopped that war. Uh, we were lucky that uh, that the uh, Japanese had an emperor that they, and he was he was almost like a god to him, you know. And when he said something, uh, everybody, you know, st uh, didn't do anything except what he said do, you know. 
So you had a pretty high opinion of uh, Eisenhower? Eisenhower? Yes. Well, uh, I mean, uh, 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 MacArthur. MacArthur. Well, y yes, but uh, see, MacArthur's over 20, 30 years. Uh, he, he was, uh, after he left the, the Army, he went to uh, Manila as Viceroy or something, you know, as, uh, as the main uh, uh, person uh, from the United States to, to the Philippines. And at that time, I, we didn't, I, I guess that we, we didn't own them, but uh, but we we was uh, always friendly with the with the uh, Filipinos there, you know, back long before and before that, uh, MacArthur's father was there, uh, so uh, MacArthur grew up in the in the South Pacific before he went to West Point, you know. In your contacts with the uh, people of the Philippines, what was your impression of them? Uh, well, it was uh, almost like stateside. And they were, uh, uh, they most all of them spoke English, uh, so we we didn't we didn't have a we didn't have a bit of bit of trouble with them. Did they seem to be industrious, hardworking? Yes, yes. And uh, I, I saw some of the you know the uh, what they call the Filipino Rangers, you know that uh, that uh, MacArthur uh, uh, had before before the uh, before we left the Philippines. But they they were they were they were real uh, educated. Uh, what we saw of them. So you weren't involved in the Baton March. No, that was no, that was uh, that was before. Uh, Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, About your whole experience, anyway. <laughs> well, when the. Uh, when the Iraqi war started, uh, I, I, I wrote all the congressmen. I was against it. Uh, uh, we, we should have never gone over there. Uh, we could have gotten rid of Saddam a different way, or some, something, bought him off. We, uh, well, here we're spending $150 billion. We, we could have we bought him off for $50 billion and, and we wouldn't have had the war, you know? But uh, but you get uh, you get the uh, war maniac running, you know, mania running, and you can't stop it, you know. It's it's just uh, uh, when you when you have uh, President Bush and uh, Rumsfeld and Wolfowitz and and Cheney wanting to go back, you know, that that his father didn't finish the war before. I mean, it's it's crazy. Uh, we 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 starting another hundred year war, and and now all the money that should be used in for education, housing, roads, uh, hospitals in the United States, there we we spending all this money, you know, overseas. It's crazy. It's, uh, but. Uh, But we Americans, we, sometimes we do crazy things, you know, and this is one of them. The idea never has been presented, but do you think if it was, would you be willing to go back into service in a non-combat role in order to do some paperwork or something? No. At least somebody for combat? No. No. You had enough? We, we, I, I had enough war, you know. After I saw Nagasaki, uh, I've had enough of it. And and and, uh, and uh, if we can't get the and and then we, we said you know that um, Saddam had the uh, weapons of mass destruction. There's two countries in the, in the world that's got the most weapons of mass destruction. We'll start with the United States. And the second is Russia. So why in the world should should other company, countries not have weapons of mass destruction if we got them and we gonna we, and, and we gonna blow them to hell like we did in Afghanistan, blew them back to the Stone Ages, and we did the same thing to uh, 
to Iraq. I mean, it's crazy, you know. We 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 destroyed a little uh, little gas and everything over at Anderson, Alabama. They burning burning that. That's been sitting there for 50 years or 40 years, you know. But but it's it's the same thing that Eisenhower said when he left office. Said one thing we got to watch is the military-industrial complex because they they going they go they going they going to rob you blind. And, uh, and everything that Eisenhower said has come to be true with, uh, in, in, in 2000, 2003. Exactly, he knew exactly what they were going to do. You got the big corporations that, that, that's running everything, and the, and, the, and the officers, chairman of the boards, the directors and everything, they're stealing all the money. That, that blows the stock market to hell. Nobody can trust the stock market. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, and there uh, we have uh, Enron, Kenny Lay, the head of it, as Bush calls him, Kenny Boy, friend. He ain't gone to jail yet, you know. I mean, uh, it's, it's uh, the American people, we, we have lost our country to the military industrial complex. And there's no way in the world that I see that how we're going to get it back. We have people in this country trying to live off a of minimum wage, and then we got people trying to be billionaires in this country. It's, it's crazy. You mentioned a man uh, a while ago. Uh, were you in service with anybody from your area of Georgia? Uh, no, no. Uh, Did you ever run into anybody over there? Well, no, except when I was coming home, I, I ran into... Uh, to uh, a couple of them uh, coming home on the on the train from uh, New Jersey, but but they had been the, the other way. I think it was one it was one guy from uh, that I might have seen in Manila. That was from Leslie, but that that's that's the only one that I ran into. So there was never any uh, central area where you had lists of people from different no. parts of the world. No, it, it was uh, m most of our people. Well, we, in the in the quartermaster corps, we, we got a lot of the uh, a lot of the boys in the air force uh, because at the end of the war they didn't need any more uh, pilots and everything. So they they put we we got about uh, two hundred of the people of the boys out of the uh, out of the air force that that uh, they let out of the air force and uh, they put them in the army in the quartermaster corps with, with us. Well, they do load trucks. Uh, yeah, mostly. But uh, in New Guinea, in New Guinea, we had a we had a black. Uh, I believe it was the ninety first or ninety second uh, black division down there, and uh, and they did they did most of all the work for us. I I, I had about twenty five or thirty work for me, and uh, and and I was a, a corporal. In uh, in New Guinea, and uh, but they they un unloaded uh, the only thing in Manila they would be unloading uh, ships on uh, ducks. Duck is that truck that uh, that can uh, you know in the ocean and water, and then it comes out and hit hits the ground and keeps you know uh, uh, going with it with the load and everything. And uh, they would load a duck with uh, t white T-shirts and khakis. And the, uh, and the duck never would show up at our depot. I mean, they, they would steal between the ship and our depot. The truck driver and everything would drive it out in the country, and they'd find the truck out there, uh, the duck, uh, two or three weeks later. That was empty and everything else, but the, but the, most of all the uh, Filipinos they they wear white shirts uh, just like me and you got on right now, and uh, and, and khaki pants. That's that's a, a white t-shirt and khaki pants for the Filipinos. That that was a uh, that was dress to go to church with. Um, did you stay in the reserves? No. You took no. your first yeah, discharge. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I came I came back home. So you didn't go back in the Korean. No, no. The, this uh, this Norwood Highsmith, he was a captain 
that there was a friend of mine in Dalton. He died in '93, but uh, I, I saw where he went back in. But uh, but he was he was a captain in the uh, engineers, and uh, and he was in uh, in World War Two. And uh, he first went to Australia, and uh, and then he went to uh, New Guinea, and then. Uh, they were fighting on a couple of the islands there, and he 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 wound up in uh, in the Philippines, southern. He's, his records say southern southern Philippines, so he must have been on some of those uh, smaller islands south of uh, Luzon that was in there and everything. Did you feel that the uh, World War II was uh, justified? Oh, well. Time to give it my well I don't, you know, it 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 had always been rumored, you know, and 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 I believe it, that uh, that we had broken the Japanese code, and we knew they were coming and everything, but uh, but to get the American people, sometimes the president would do crazy things to get the American people ready to, ready for war, uh, and uh, but uh, it's just like the. Uh, at the Twin Towers, New York, we we had 3,100 people killed, and because of that, we 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 killed uh, 200,000 in in Afghanistan and Iraq. The num the numbers don't add up, you know. It, it <laughs> it's 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 crazy. But as far as World War II was concerned, you were well. I I don't know. I I, th I think if we had so see the the reason. The, the Japanese wanted to fight us. That we, we were shifting them iron over there to make the ships and everything for the war machine, and uh, and uh, and we and we cut the iron off, you know. And and they and we stood around and let them get so big, you know, that uh, you know that they thought they were going to take on us, you know. Uh, I I don't think I think any war can be uh, be. Uh, can be stopped if uh, if you have the right people at the right place at the right time. Even in Hitler, the uh, the uh, even the Jewish people, the the uh, Jewish bankers in uh, in Germany backed Hitler. He was borrowing money from them. They furnished they furnished the money. Uh, the uh, the Jewish bankers, the Lord, the uh, it's not Lowenstein, but the big. Big Jewish bankers in in Europe over there. See. So, so you it, think the war was more of an economic problem than anything else. I don't think we had the right leaders at the right time, uh, uh, because when Hitler first started over there, uh, you don't you don't you don't go over there. You know you you don't the bankers shouldn't have loaned the money to do it. You know. And another thing, where, where did it start from? From the unemployment of the of the of the, of the German people, of no jobs. So they, uh, so that that's what that's what uh, that's what Bush is doing to us today. He's scaring us, you know. Every day, you know, uh, we got to do this, we got to do that. Uh, he's scared us, you know. Uh, the uh, the uh, Saddam is coming, you know. Uh, the uh, 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 Taliban is coming, Bin Laden is coming, you know. So what they do, they, they scare you to death. Uh, they don't scare me, but, uh, but the normal, normal person, they scare them to death, you know. And then, then we give them $47 billion. Then we give them $87 billion. Well, it's, it's going uh, to be more than that. Next year, it's, it's going to be more because we, we're not going to... Uh, and we got people unemployed here in, in the United States. We we could use that eighty-seven billion dollars hiring somebody to go to work. Okay. Now we've got about five minutes left. Have you got anything else about your wartime experiences you'd like to uh, cover? I I don't think so. Maybe I've said too much already. <laughs> this is your tape. Your tape. Uh, okay, then I guess that's the end. Thank you.